We are solving a little design dilemma today, folks. Does anyone have areas in their house that needs maybe a uniquely sized rug? Not your typical five by seven. Those places seem to be everywhere mm -hmm. in my house. You wouldn't believe how you can solve this simple problem with a floor cloth. It's as simple as that, and our favorite design expert, Judy Cutler, is here to show us how. So great to have you back. Thank you so much. I am so excited about this because uh, a floor cloth is different than a rug, and this mm -hmm. is something, especially the way that you do it, that you can kind of customize to your color, your mm -hmm. design, any way you really want it to look, you can do that yourself. You can, and the interesting thing is that this actually came came about from the early 1700s, Ooh. and wives of sailors used to use the old sail cloth. Huh. To make floor rugs. Oh, interesting. Well, so. here's a few examples right here of different floor cloths. And what are some areas, Judy, that maybe you can, you know, spice up a room with a floor cloth? Are we talking anywhere in the house? Inside and outside. They're great for back patios. And I'm going to show you how to seal your floor cloth so that it becomes waterproof and you can just sweep it off. Fabulous. Um, stairs. Doing a runner uh -huh. down oh, your stairs, the runners. The fabric actually comes 60 inches wide, and you can make so it however long. So a good long. size yeah. of it. So what do we need to do first? This here, uh, you you pretty much kind of have a little pre-made for us, and you're, we're going to go through the steps here right. in a second. But this is actually canvas right this, here, right? This is canvas. So basically, you buy your canvas at this fabric store. You pre-shrink it, wash it so that it's shrunk, so that when when it does get wet, or if it ever gets wet, it doesn't curl, curl up. Curl up, okay. So once you've pre-shrunk your fabric and you've cut your desired size, mm -hmm. you're going to take a paintbrush and white paint, and you're going to prep it, okay, just like a painter's canvas would be. So you want to paint the whole thing. Mm -hmm. It seals it. You can do it with a roller brush, okay, much easier. But it seals Saves it. Saves so a little that, time that way, maybe. Yeah seals it so that you can can add your paint. And I'm going to just show you really quickly how to make this wash. This is going to be very fast. I love the colors you chose. Why? I, I kind of give people some tips maybe on choosing colors too. Do you want to stick with what's next to each other on a color palette or is it just really whatever you think looks pretty? Well, I actually do a couple things. A lot of times I go to the paint store. So you've got your color Great palettes idea. are yeah, already picked out for you. There. So it gives you an idea you're not starting from scratch. Um, but the other thing is, I usually do it around rooms that I'm trying to blend color in, mm -hmm. that I'm having a hard time um, getting colors for. So anyway, to make a wash, basically, you're going to dump a little water on your tray. You're going to dip your brush in water, mm -hmm. in paint, and then you just go back and forth and you make a wash across your, your uh, canvas. So you're kind of using the water to dilute the paint a little right. bit and thin it out? Right. It gives it just a little bit more of a distressed look so it's not so intense. And then you can kind of ombre your colors together like this. You know, that distressed look, that ombre look is so trendy right now. People really seem to love that. So it's it really is. cool that you can just go to the paint store, pick out a few colors, and like you showed us here, do it yourself. Right. So you, you've prepped it. You've got the color down. Now you're going to basically do what you just did here across the whole thing. Across the whole thing. But before I start, usually what I do is I actually do a tester. Smart. On a small piece like we're doing here, mm -hmm. so that you kind of know that that's what you really want to mm -hmm. do. Because once you start applying, applying paint, yeah, you're, you're, you're done. You're committed. <laughs> so anyway, once you apply the paint, you let this dry. Let it dry completely before you add other layers. Mm -hmm. But you can layer upon layer. For instance, I could add this ombre and I could then take painter's tape, mm -hmm. stripe this off, yes, and make chevrons idea. or other shapes on top of that ombre. Or you can take a stencil. I love these. I love the stencils. Which is what we've done here. We've taken a stencil, applied it over the top of the cloth, and created a design on top of that ombre. Can you use the same type of brush when you're stenciling? Do you? Because I know sometimes people like the sponge brushes, or they've got the bristle ones. Does it really make a difference? There are actually um, stenciling brushes that I think work better. I did not use that, regrettably. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it looks gorgeous, though. Sp I wouldn't have sponging known. Sponging actually sli slips under the paint slips underneath the, the stencil. Oh. Okay. So it's really better if I you can actually take a brush, but make sure that you you dab down like that. You're mm -hmm. not painting across your stencil. Okay. Okay. So when you do put the stencil down, are you holding it down? Do you need to tape it down? Is it is it I help actually, if you do that? When I did this, see how that stuck? I actually put double sided tape on the back of mine. Okay. So that when you apply it over Smart the top of your woman, yeah, you, Judy. <laughs> so it doesn't move around, and you don't have to worry about the paint slipping underneath. The and stencil. they have so many different designs with stencils, and that's what I love about it too. Because if you're not that you know great with the paintbrush or you're not that great of an artist, you've got stencils already pre-cut, you can go pick out different, uh, you know, designs yeah. in them and then you've got something beautiful like this. And the last step is to um, make your floor cloth waterproof. And this is with some simple things from home mm -hmm. you can do this. I've chosen, there's beeswax, hmm. candle wax, Never and walnut oil. Walnut oil. Okay. And you actually mix these things together 
It's two parts mm -hmm. of both of the waxes to one part oil. You can use olive mm. oil, you can use oh, Weston oil, whatever you've got at home. Put this in the microwave and you actually paint this right over the top of your, your cloth and it seals it and it makes it waterproof. So this is, yeah, it was, like you just said a sealant on it. So you put that in the microwave. I never would have put, I never would have guessed, Judy. So that's why she's here to show us the right way how to do things. Do you suggest even if it's inside waterproofing it or do we only want to do that if it's outside? Well, it, if you spill. Yeah, then you're in trouble. You can just wipe it right time. off. Okay. Fabulous ideas. Again, floor cloths. You can do your own custom design. So much better than just going out and buying some area rug. I love it. Love your ideas. Thank you so much, Judy. Always You're great welcome. to see you. Do you have a decorating on a dime idea? Let us know. You can post your Morning Blend Facebook page or send us an email at fox4morningblend.com. And we will have one last look at your Fox forecast and then be right back. Stay with us.